Yeah, for me it's a great joy to discover the, the ease and openness and intelligence and love that you know, I always knew that I was. And to be able to access that on a, on a regular, reliable basis, to recognize that that completely open-hearted, easygoing, loving, powerful being is what I actually am. And what I saw and have come to see and continue to see is that there's a very basic mechanism by which I understand myself and the world and other people. And in each moment I have a, a very simple choice. I can either focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions about what's going on and label them and put them into categories and positive, negative and neutral, higher, lower, mine, yours, internal, external and build a world that is based on all of these descriptions. And that's the approach that I had for many decades and um, it seemed to be the only way to go about living life. It seemed to be what everybody else was doing. But when I looked at the results of trying to live my life that way, even on a very personal level, I could see that there was this deep sense of dissatisfaction, of um, disappointment, disillusionment, um, confusion, uh, not really feeling like I knew my place in the world, not really having um, consistently open-hearted relationships, even with the people that were closest with me in my, my life, my friends and family. And that, that's just on a personal level. And we can look even beyond that. We can look at what the conventional model of living life and of understanding ourselves looks like in society. You know, we can see the constant conflict and arguments and difficulties. We can look at what's going on on our planet and between nations. We can see the uncaring, confrontational attitude that is just so prevalent. And um, what I've seen and what I come to see more and more is that I have a choice as to how I'm going to live my life. I can continue contributing to a world that is increasingly desperate, increasingly violent, um, isolated and um, causing huge damage on every single level, however you describe it, personally and collectively. Or I can make a stand and I can claim my birthright as open intelligence. And in the Balanced View training I found a support system that would support me completely and fully to really claim that birthright, to see how I want to use my mind, how I want to live my life, how I want to order and understand everything that's going on. So I tried the conventional approach for a long time and I know exactly what that looks like and where that leads. And when I came to the Balanced View training I was given this really simple instruction just to take a short moment of relaxing completely. A short moment of just stopping that obsessive need to describe and analyse and think about everything that's going on, apply the labels, just to relax completely. And then to repeat that short moment of relaxation and, and see what happened. And so that, that's what I did initially. I took short moments and I started listening to the media on the website, all of the thousands of hours of free downloads there. And what I began to see for myself was that actually that reality that I'd believed in, that seemed so fixed and solid and, and real, was just completely made up. Because in a short moment of just stopping that describing, all, all I found was this openness of perception, this openness of relating, this openness of intelligence, where everything was naturally included. And the habit of describing everything, of categorizing everything, of analyzing everything was something that um, I'd been practicing for a very long time. So it took a while for that habit just to settle down naturally. But each short moment I took of just relaxing completely, it, it, it was, it was um, 
taking away that momentum of continually describing. So the instruction short moments repeated many times was key because it wasn't just one instant of recognizing this total openness of perception, the intelligence that's looking through your eyes that, that doesn't need any descriptions. It's there regardless of any descriptions. It's naturally present. And of noticing that and identifying that in my own experience, and, and as we heard, just to stop thinking for a moment is such a powerful way just to identify what's looking through your eyes without labelling it or describing it, just to notice <coughs> it, just to acknowledge it. And as I repeated that, the assurance and confidence that this was something that I could actually really rely on in, in my everyday experience of life just naturally grew. And as I took these short moments of relying on open intelligence, what was revealed to me was the actual nature of reality, which was a completely seamless, absolutely beneficial expanse that included all data, all descriptions, all thoughts, emotions, sensations or other experiences were already included within this vast expanse of perfect benefit, of pure love. Now that is not what I'd been told and not what I'd been practicing. My practice previously had been to, to sort my experience, to work out whether it was good, bad, or just neutral, the neutral ones I didn't really think about, and the good ones I had to try and accumulate or hold on to, and the negative ones I had to try and keep at bay. And that was my practice, trying to work out what made me happy, how could I bring about this feeling of love, and how could I keep the negative experiences away or minimize them. And I had all of these strategies, so many different strategies, everything. Everything in my life was about manipulating my experience to try and make it look good, to try and make myself feel good. And so when I came to the training and I was given this instruction, take a short moment of just allowing it to be as it is, no matter how it feels or what it looks like, or where you are or who you're with, that was completely new for me. And as I began to do that, then suddenly I could see all of these strategies, these ways of trying to control my experience. And as I made this choice not to use these strategies, but instead to rely on open intelligence and the support of the Four Mainstays, it was like unleashing this avalanche of data that I'd been holding at bay. You know, social anxiety, all of the ways, drinking, smoking, running the hell away, all of these ways of dealing with something like social anxiety. And now I was being asked or suggested and that maybe I could just allow myself to feel it. And it was like feeling it for the first time fully for myself and the intensity of everything that I was feeling. But it was great to know that I had the support of this whole global network a trainer that I could really rely on to clarify my experience, spending time with other people that were either going through something very similar or, or had been through something very similar, and learning from other people's experience and their example, having this practice of short moments, where when it seemed scary and I was so used to emphasizing the data, just for a short moment I could test out for myself what it was like to relax and allow it to be as it was. I didn't have to prolong anything or contrive anything or force anything. Just very naturally and very gently aligning myself with this reality of complete openness. And then there's all of the written trainings and the media online. Everything supporting me and confirming this completely open nature of reality. And the negative or afflictive states are simply the ones that I'd learned most thoroughly are the things that shouldn't be there. So those are the ones that were most challenging because I'd had decades of telling myself, watching media, listening to other people saying, you must not feel sad. When you feel sad, that is a sign that there's something wrong with you, something wrong with your life, something wrong with your partner, something wrong with your job, something wrong with your bank account, something wrong with your health. And you need to look at all of these and you need to sort them out. <laughs> And I really tried, I tried my best. I really, really tried hard and I'd still wake up sad. And I was desperate, what, what else can I do? 
And so to allow it to be as it was, there are phrases in the text that when I first came across them, they seemed a little bit mysterious or a little bit, um, at least not initially understandable. And there were things like the affliction is there to show you that there is no affliction. And now I know exactly what that means. And that has come about by allowing myself to feel the affliction very gently, one short moment at a time, without going anywhere other than to the four mainstays, to open intelligence, to recognize for myself that whatever I'm feeling, whether it's anger, uh, love and attraction, that's one of the most afflictive things we can feel, um, sadness, irritation, loneliness, so instead of reaching for an antidote or trying to get rid of it or change it, just to allow it to be as it is and to recognize it as nothing other than open intelligence's dynamic energy, this potency to be of benefit. You're basically re-evaluating or redefining all of your experience from this position of just complete openness and everything is revealed as just this perfect love. All of my descriptions about everything, myself, other people, the world, my life, all of it, just this, just this seamless display, display of, of, of just dynamic potency, not something that I need to work out or do anything about. By allowing it to be as it is, this open loving nature is just naturally revealed. And so the afflictions are there to show me open intelligence. The afflictions are there to show me my power to be of benefit. And the outshining of affliction, the analogy that's really beautiful is the outshining of the planets and stars that we see so clearly at night. And then when the sun rises, they get less and less obvious. They're still there in the sky. And that's very much my experience with my afflictions. And there have been times in this training when they have really raged and it seemed like all I saw was my affliction. But that was just a temporary data stream in itself and not something that I could hold on to either. And I've seen that by allowing them to rage, by really feeling everything intensely, that is the outshining. Because until I allow myself to feel everything intensely, then there's still going to be some subtle avoidance, indulgence or replacement of that data stream going on. So it does take this courage and I have so much respect and um, admiration for everybody that is courageous enough to, to really take this all the way. But what I've seen for myself is that by taking it all the way, by really deciding and committing to this, then what's revealed is the life that I was always looking for. The life where I just enjoy being alive more and more, regardless of what's going on or how I'm feeling. I feel more and more empowered to contribute who I am exactly as I am to the world without needing to pretend to be something that I'm not or to, to pretend anything at all. I can just be myself and in that discover this capacity to be of great benefit that we all share because that is actually who we are and there is this just this sense of love and just this amazing sense of love and care where you really want the best for yourself and everybody else. Now I'd always wanted that, but I've been so focused in on all of my descriptions and data that even with the best intentions and the desire to really be a good person, it had been impossible. So focused in on all of my own just <laughs> nonsense is a good word. <laughs> we had questions about swearing yesterday in the training. <laughs> Yeah, so it really is as simple as a choice of how you want to live your life. And I, I cannot believe the way that this choice unfolds in my own experience. It continues to increase inexhaustibly, this, this wonder and delight at being alive, this potency of being a human being. And it doesn't mean everything suddenly looks all beautiful. It's really getting real with everything and seeing that it is open intelligence that you can depend on. That is what you want to train up. That is what you want to know about yourself. Because then you can deal with anything. You know the nature of reality. You know the nature of intelligence. You know your nature. And that is knowledge. That is wisdom. That is the kind of information that you can take with you wherever you go. And you can apply wherever you go.